二零一五年嘅第八条题目就系讲糖尿病嘅，亦都系两谁最中意嘅题型啦，就系、是、体病学败我啦。今次我哋嘅主角 Lisa 喺一次体检入面咧，就发现佢嘅尿液入面有葡萄糖，咁医生就叫佢啦 check check 下血啦。咁但系 check 血之前咧，就要卧足十二个钟，而得出嘅咧就系下面三个嘅数据啦。血糖嘅水平系八点四，但系正常嘅血糖水平系四至六，胰岛素嘅水平系零点二。但系正常人嘅水平咧就系三至三十二，高糖素嘅水平系一百三十，但系正常健康嘅人咧就系二十到一百。咁 Part A 咧就问翻啦，咁究竟 Lisa 系边一款嘅糖尿病咧？咁啊，因为糖尿病啦，系有分一型同埋二型噶嘛。一型咧就系胰岛素依赖型，就即系话啦，佢哋系制造唔到胰岛素或者制造得好少嘅胰岛素嘅。而糖尿病二型咧就系属于非胰岛素依赖型。亦即係話佢哋咧係能夠製造胰島素，不過啲身體細胞咧就對於胰島素唔敏感啫。而我哋可以睇翻 Lisa 嘅體檢報告咧，我哋就會發現啦，佢血液入面嘅胰島素含量比起正常人為之低，亦即係 Lisa 咧係屬於一型嘅糖尿病或者胰島素依賴型啦。好，跟住啦就到 Part B 啦。Part B 咧我哋就睇兩款嘅荷爾蒙嘅，一款係胰島素，另一款就係高糖素啦。題目就要我哋去利用。胰岛素同埋高糖素佢哋嘅制造同埋佢哋嘅功能，去解释一下阿 Lisa 咧佢嘅血液测试嘅报告嘅结果啦。成条题目考我哋嘅第一样嘢就系胰岛素同埋高糖素嘅基本功能啦。咁我哋都知道啦，胰岛素咧就系帮我哋将个血糖下降翻去翻正常水平嘅，而高糖素咧就系将我哋过低嘅血糖提升翻。亦都係去返正常水平嘅，又話基本功冇得妥協，呢一樣嘢都唔識嘅話呢，就成條題目答唔到落去㗎啦。跟住啦，就去返答題框架喇喎，點樣可以利用返佢哋嘅製造同埋佢哋嘅機制去解釋返 Lisa 嘅血糖報告結果呢？當中啦，我哋有因，亦都有果。個因呢，就係、是、胰島素同埋高糖素佢哋嘅製造啦。當中我哋 Part A 知道咗 Lisa 呢係一型嘅糖尿病。咁所以我哋会发现啦 ，Lisa 咧系制造唔足够嘅胰岛素啦，冇咗胰岛素嘅抑制作用咧 ，Lisa 嘅胰脏咧亦都能够制造大量嘅高糖素。而去到第二部分啦，就系讲翻胰岛素同埋高糖素嘅功能，佢哋嘅作用啦，亦即系佢哋背后控制血糖嘅机制啦。咁其实书本咧都好直白俾咗大家噶啦，例如胰岛素会刺激我哋嘅肝脏細胞喺个血入面抽取啲葡萄糖。然后就将过多嘅葡萄糖咧，就转化成糖原，就跟住啦，就储存喺个肝脏入面嘅呢啲基本机制，你温咗书未咧？然后就去到个结果啦，就系、是、Lisa 嘅血液报告，就最后一分咧就系、是、个果啦。究竟 Lisa 嘅血液测试报告显示佢嘅血糖高定低咧？咁由于啦 ，Lisa 制造唔到足够嘅胰岛素，所以亦都唔会有将血糖降低翻嘅机制啦。所以啦 ，Lisa 嘅血糖水平咧就 keep 住好高，或者跌得好慢，甚至乎咧，即使饿咗十二个钟，都仍然系超越咗正常水平嘅。跟住去到高糖素咧，由于 Lisa 嘅胰脏能够制造大量嘅高糖素，咁高糖素有咩用啊？书本都有讲到嘅，例如啦，将糖原转化成葡萄糖，又或将其他嘅养分转化成葡萄糖，再将啲葡萄糖咧释放翻去个血液嗰处。咁所以啦，亦都解釋到點解 Lisa 呢有一個高嘅血糖水平啦。你會問阿兩 Sir 係咪一定要因果咁樣去答㗎？我可唔可以反轉，好似通識咁樣，先畀咗個主題句我先。嗱，佢問我啊嘛，血液測試嘅結果，咁我咪講咗個果先囉，然後再講個因，又得唔得啊？當然可以啦、啊。根據返 Lisa 嘅血糖報告呢。即使饿咗十二个钟，佢嘅血糖水平咧都系八点四啊，都系比起咧正常嘅四至六咧系为之高嘅。嗱，记住俾翻个单位我。讲完个果咯，就讲个因咯。点解 Lisa 嘅血糖水平咁高呢？第一啦，因为 Lisa 咧系一个一型糖尿病患者，个胰脏咧系唔能够释放足够嘅胰岛素，或者直头咧系冇胰岛素嘅产生。咁当然睇结果啦，我哋知道啦，佢系有好少好少嘅胰岛素啦。于胰岛素嘅刺激不足嘅话咧，就会令到佢嘅身体細胞能够喺个血所吸收翻嚟嘅葡萄糖咧就会少咗。所以啦，就唔能够好快速地降低翻过高嘅血糖水平啦。其实你讲因跟住果又得，先讲个果，再解释翻都得。但最紧要你够清晰，就唔好跳嚟跳去。好，跟住去到 part C 啦。
。根據翻 Lisa 嘅身體狀況，我哋要介紹兩個飲食習慣俾佢。咁其實成條題目咧就係考翻我哋有關於一型糖尿病或者胰島素依賴型嘅糖尿病啦。究竟嗰個病人有啲咩嘅特徵啦？但系佢能够产生嘅胰岛素好少好少，甚至乎系冇，所以 Lisa 咧系唔能够处理，唔能够调控一个大幅上升嘅血糖水平嘅。而由于题目咧就要我哋俾一个飲食嘅習慣佢，咁当然同一般嘅飲食習慣系唔同啦。咁我哋就要去评估一下一般人嘅飲食習慣啦。一般人嘅飲食習慣就系一日三餐，早餐、午餐、晚餐，每一餐之间可能相距四到五个钟啦。而我哋嘅身體食完每一餐之後咧，我哋嘅血糖水平咧都會大幅上升嘅。根據翻一個正常飲食嘅呢個觀察，究竟我哋建議 Lisa 去採用一啲咩嘅飲食習慣為之好呢？咁佢書本咧就講得好空泛嘅健康飲食，咩叫做健康飲食先？我哋嚟睇下有咩關鍵嘅條件咯。第一個係有關於時間嘅問題。餐與餐之間係相距四到五個鐘，即係話啦，每隔四五個鐘咧 ，Lisa 就會面對一個突然上升嘅血糖水平啦。咁呢件事係唔理想嘅，因為啦 ，Lisa 根本冇能力去處理一個大幅上升嘅血糖。Lisa 除咗面對一個突如其來嘅血糖上升咧，血糖上升嘅幅度其實都係 Lisa 需要考慮嘅。如果佢每一餐所食嘅嘢係令到佢血糖急劇上升嘅話咧，對佢嚟講都係一個唔理想嘅狀況。咁佢嘅飲食習慣應該點樣改變呢？面對一個突如其來嘅血糖上升，我哋就會建議 Lisa 咧少食多餐。透過少食多餐 ，Lisa 每一餐唔使食咁多，亦即係話佢個血糖唔會突然之間爆升，只係維持返正常水平就已經夠啦。但 Lisa 都要滿足佢嘅能量需要㗎嘛，所以就唯有食多幾餐啦。二啦就係解決血糖急劇上升嘅情況，我哋就要建議 Lisa 去食一啲呢。唔会短时间之内将血糖水平上升嘅嘢食啦，例如糖果，例如汽水，因为佢哋有嘅咧就系糖分。由于糖分相比起淀粉质较为简单，佢唔需要咁长嘅时间消化，系好快就已经吸收咗入咗血，就令到 Lisa 嘅血糖咧就会急剧上升。呢、这个都系唔理想嘅状况，所以我哋就会建议 Lisa 咧少食多餐，同埋避免摄取过量嘅糖分，而令佢嘅血糖水平咧喺短时间之内急剧上升啦。咁呢条题目啦，有咩嘅变奏呢？第一啦，就是、有关于升糖指数，就系、是、有关于呢一个糖分摄取嘅问题啦。唔食糖果，唔饮汽水，除咗糖分之外啦，咁佢都要摄取碳水化合物噶。咁食咩好呢？例如食淀粉质，你需要去消化嘅，就总好过直接摄取糖分，例如食糖食朱古力啦。第二个变奏呢，就系真系睇病学拜我啦。点解 Lisa 佢嘅高糖素水平系比一般人为之高嘅呢？嗱，咁頭先嗰條題目呢，就講得好簡單嘅啫，就係、是、話由於缺乏咗胰島素嘅抑制作用，所以高糖素嘅釋出呢，就會比一般人為之高。咁呢句説話冇錯嘅，但係背後嘅成個原因同埋機制係乜嘢呢？你噏唔噏得出呢？而糖尿病呢，其實就唔淨止長提出嘅。往后嘅日子咧，都有好多 M C 真系无限出题嘅。点解两 Sir 咁推崇睇病学拜我 disease approach？ 因为呢一个正正就系我哋整个科学探究嘅精神，亦都系令到拜我咁精彩、咁有趣嘅原因。好，又嚟到一点出发啦。今次成条题目咧就系用糖尿病做切入点嘅，考嘅咧两样嘢，第一就系睇病学拜我，第二就系体内平衡啦。睇病学拜我唔难理解啦，糖尿病嘅类型啦，一型、二型有咩嘅分别啦，点样处理，点样预防啦，呢一类型咧你一定要识嘅。咁除咗睇糖尿病学拜我之外啦，喺我哋身体系有好多病痛咧，你系需要学识嘅。远视啦，近视啦，散光啦，白内障啦，心脏病啦，如此种种好多好多。而有关于体内平衡唔使审啦，今次就系有关于调节血糖水平嘅机制啦。咁之前两 s 都拍咗两段片咧，系有关于体内平衡嘅，唔单止系控制血糖，系去到你 elective one 嗰课，控制二氧化碳嘅水平啊，控制尿素嘅水平啊，控制血压嘅水平啊，通通教晒你。点样可以运用翻基本功冇得妥协，同埋思考嘅英架咧？你轻轻松松就攞满分。呢条题目咧都仲有另一个 extension 嘅，就系、是、身体检查啦。要身体检查，我哋有唔同嘅参数，好似讲血糖嘅水平、胰岛素嘅水平同埋高糖素嘅水平。除此之外啦，仲有冇咧？胆固醇啦、血压啦、气体啦，分别系氧气同埋二氧化碳啦，同埋尿素。
，呢啲都係讲緊我哋喺个身体检查入面可以量度到嘅数据，而俾我哋知道究竟嗰个人有冇病呢 t h one five question eight is about the disease approach. That's my favorite question. In a health check, Lisa was found to have glucose in her urine. Therefore, Lisa is a diabetic patient. She undertook a further checkup in which she has fast for 12 hours. That means eat nothing before the blood test. And then we have the following result. Blood glucose level 8.4 is higher than the normal range 4 to 6. And insulin level is lower than the normal range 3 to 32, just 0.2. And for the glucagon level is 130, is higher than the 20 to 100 normal range. So for part A, state the type of diabetes Lisa is suffering from. In this question, we have to distinguish the type 1 diabetes from the type 2 diabetes. So we know that for the type 1 diabetes, we call that insulin dependent because the patient, they secrete too little or low insulin because the insulin secreting cells in the pancreas are destroyed. So from the blood test, we know that the insulin level of Lisa is very, very low, lower than the normal range. Therefore, Lisa is suffering from type 1 diabetes, or we call that insulin-dependent diabetes. And then for part B, we need to take a look at these two hormones, insulin and glucagon, with reference to the production and the actions of the two hormones. We need to explain the result of the Lisa's blood test. For this question, the fundamental concept is about the functions of the insulin and the glucagon. The basic function of the insulin is to lower the blood glucose level to restore to the normal level. And the function of the glucagon is to rise the blood glucose level to restore the normal level. The whole question is asking us to account for something. That means to explain something. So we need to talk about the cause and the effect. So what is the cause? The cause, we need to recall the production of the insulin or the glucagon. We need to recall that Lisa is suffering from the type 1 diabetes. So we can see that Lisa's pancreas failed to secrete enough insulin. And without inhibitory effect of insulin, Lisa's pancreas secrete a large amount of glucagon. It's about the production. And for the second part, we need to recall the action of the insulin and glucagon. That means the mechanism of the blood glucose regulation. So we also can recall the action of these two hormones. For example, with insufficient stimulation by insulin, there is a reduced uptake of glucose from the blood by the liver cells for conversion into glycogen. And for the glucagon, high level of glucagon stimulates the liver cells to promote the conversion of glucose from glycogen or from other food substance, for example, amino acid. After we talk about the causes, we need to talk about the results. So the effect is the result of Lisa's blood test. Therefore, we can see that Lisa's blood glucose level drops very slowly or remained at a high level even after 12 hours fasting. For the glucagon case, for the high-level glucagon, it promotes the conversion of glucose from amino acid. So it's the way to maintain a high blood glucose level in Lisa's blood. So you may ask that, Mr. Leung, do we have to talk about the cause and then talk about the effect? We answer, just like the liberal studies, we have the topic sentence first. I would like to state the result of Lisa's blood test and then talk about the reason. Surely, you can talk about the effect and then the cause. Firstly, you need to talk about the results. According to Lisa's blood test, her blood glucose level is 8.4, which is higher than the normal level 4 to 6 range even after 12 hours of fasting. Remember, you need to mention the unit. It's because Lisa is suffering from type 1 diabetes, so her pancreas cannot secrete enough insulin or no insulin. But in this case, we know that it should be not enough insulin. Due to the insufficient stimulation by insulin, there will be reduced uptake of glucose from the blood by the body cells or by the liver cells. So for the body cells, the glucose is used for the respiration. So the key idea is that no matter you talk about the cause or the effect, you need to know what are you answering. Not answering the question in a random order. So for part C, we need to suggest two dietary habits to Lisa. So for this question, is checking the cause of the type 1 diabetes because Lisa cannot produce sufficient amount of insulin. Therefore, Lisa cannot handle a large increase of blood glucose level. And in this question, we need to suggest dietary habit. So that means it should be something different from the normal diet. 
So that's why we need to evaluate the normal diet habit. Normally, we have three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There may be four to five hours in between each meal. And our body needs to handle a large increase of blood glucose level in every meal. So what is the new dietary habit? In the textbook, it just talks about healthy eating. But what is healthy eating? It's too ambiguous, too general. So we need to point out the critical criteria for the diet recommendation. First of all, we need to think about the time. For the normal diet, Lisa is always experiencing a sudden increase of their blood glucose level after meal because there are four to five hours in between the meal. So that means every four to five hours, Lisa will be experiencing the sudden increase of the blood glucose level. And that's something we need to avoid in the new dietary habit. And for the second criterion is the magnitude. We need to avoid the surge of the blood glucose level after meal. So it's about what is she going to eat. For example, if Lisa is taking some simple carbohydrate, so it takes a shorter time for the digestion. And Lisa will absorb the sugar in a very short period of time. So for the new dietary habit, Lisa should have frequent meal, but in small portions. The idea is that we do not want Lisa experience a sudden increase of blood glucose level in four to five hours. But we have to ensure that the blood glucose level of Lisa is within the normal range. Meanwhile, Lisa has to meet the daily energy requirement. Therefore, she has frequent meal, but in small portions. Secondly, Lisa has to avoid the food which elevate or increase the blood glucose level in a short time, such as sugar in the candies or soft drink. For example, she should take the starch. Because the starch, they are the compressed carbohydrate. It takes a longer time for the body to digest it and then to release the sugar, release the glucose. That's why we can avoid the surge of the blood glucose level after the meal. Any possible question variation? First of all, we can talk about the glycemic index. Glycemic index, it means that it shows how quickly each food affects your blood glucose level when that food is eaten on its own. Just what we talk about. Candy, soft drink, compare them with starch. So we can see that the glycemic index of the candy, it must be higher. And for the second one, it's about disease approach. Why is there abnormally high level of glucagon in Lisa's blood test. Part B is just talking about without the inhibitory effect of the insulin, for there will be a higher level of glucagon release. But what is the exact reason behind that? Can you think about it? Apart from the long question, there are lots of MC questions also about diabetes. Therefore, I always teach my students about the disease approach because it is the essential way and funny way to learn biology. So let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question it starts from the diabetes and we talk about the disease approach and the whole meal status. For the disease approach, we talk about the types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2, and how can we treat it or prevent it. And apart from the diabetes, there are a lot of diseases in biology. Long sight, short sight, cataracte, heart disease, genetic disease, a lot, a lot. We can analyze the function of the particular organ based on the symptoms of the disease. And for the homeostasis, surely we need to talk about the mechanism of the blood glucose level regulation. In the past, Mr. Leung has made two videos about the homeostasis. How can we analyze the question of the homeostasis, not only for this topic, but also for the human physiology? How can we use the fundamental concepts and use the scaffolding to get full marks in the homeostasis and the human physiology question? And there is an extension part in this question, it is the body checkup. And there are a lot of parameters for us to study. Blood glucose level, insulin level, glucagon level. And apart from them, we can study the cholesterol level, blood pressure, gas including the oxygen and the carbon dioxide, and also the urea level. And based on those data, we can analyze which type of disease is the patient suffering from.